Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'd like to just focus on one particular uh, legume and give you a bit of an insight of uh, the diversity in that um, legume called Desmanthus. Um, so um, the Desmanthus uh, genus contains some 24 species and they originate from the Americas with a centre of diversity uh, thought to be in Mexico where there's uh, 14 species occur. Um, it's, Desmanthus is a member of the Mimosaceae legume family, so it's related to things like acacias and um, leucina, but it's unusual for that um, family as it's um, mostly a herbaceous species rather than a, a woody one. And they're described as being surf, surf fruity coasts, which means they have a woody base, but they have a herbaceous top on them. And they're usually um, branched, prostrate to erect um, in their habit. Uh, on the, the, the images on the bottom there, you can see um, on the left there, there's um, some of the prostrate desmaphers uh, going through some buffalo grass. And on the right is one of the more erect um, species. In general, Desmaphus um, uh, prefers to grow on neutral to alkaline clay soils. And on the uh, map there, you can see in Queensland and across into the Northern Territory, we have huge areas of those sort of um, clay, heavy clay soils or vertisols. Uh, there's a lot in central Queensland, in the Brigalow Belt, and there's huge areas um, in the west. Um, but most of those are um, to the west of the 500 millimetre iso height line, um, and that's an area where there's virtually no um, sown pasture legumes available at all. Um, Desmanthus in its native um, places um, occurs in a wide variety of areas from sandy beaches, rocky landscapes and even into saline environments, and they occur in low and high altitudes as well, well as um, low and high latitudes. So they occur north and south of the equator, for, for example, from Texas down to southern Argentina. Uh, generally, though, they, are, they occur in tropical and subtropical environments, but can uh, often be found in fairly arid environments. Uh, the images on the bottom there show you some examples of them, of the sort of environments they thrive in, like the cracking clay on the bottom left there and um, in a, a pebbly, rocky, uh, gidgy um, clay soil. Um, just a couple of images to, to show the, the diversity and the, these um, ones are showing how they can grow in saline environments. The two images on the left are Desmanthus growing with um, marine cooch the top one's in Townsville and the, the bottom one's um, down near Bowen. And over on the right, there's some Desmanthus plants growing right on the side of a tidal, tidal lake. The, the rainfall, um, some species um, thrive in dry environments and there's some other species that will um, thrive in uh, very wet, wet tropical uh, regions. So the image on the top left there is um, out west of Longreach, and that's about a 360 mil rainfall. And we have some plots out there that are uh, doing well. On the bottom left is a plot growing out near Hewenden, that's uh, about a 480 millimetre rainfall area, and that's growing there with uh, flinders grass. Uh, the bottom right there is out at Springshaw, that's a, um, a Desmanthus buffalo. Paddock, paddock and that's in about a 690 millimetre rainfall. And the one up the top is um, in Indonesia, uh, in West Java, and that was um, yeah, wet tropics, about 3,000 mil rainfall. So these are uh, palatable legumes. Um, the whole plant is, is well grazed. Um, the leaf has a crude protein around about 20% and stems in the 10, 12% carrot. And then there's some that have a deep uh, sort of traditional type of tap root. And all of these different rooting systems give the plant some uh, drought tolerance and um, able to persist in, in uh, tough times. They also uh, have um, a special trait called uh, nictinastic um, leaf movements and um, this is where the leaves close up at, um, with poor light or at night, and 
this is a trait that helps us identify the different species. And um, on the top right there is one particular species that uh, at night folds its leaves down, but the, uh, the leaf stem or the rachis stays um, in a normal position. The next one on the, the bottom middle there folds its uh, leaf stem and its leaves down at night. And the third one, which is Desmaphis vergatus, folds its um, uh, um, rachis and the leaflets upwards. That um, probably seems pretty minor to, to some of you, but um, it's a trait that really helps us identify the different species. Um, and just uh, very briefly, I just picked out three species to, um, to show you. Um, the first one is Desmanthus bicornotus. Bicornotus is a, comes in various um, uh, sizes, if you like. Um, they're mostly shrubby types of Desmanthus. Uh, some are short and some are tall. Um, the one on the top right there is one that's doing particularly well out around Hewenden. Um, the, the ones on the bottom there, um, at first glance, you might think they're Leukina, but they're, they're Desmanthus. Uh, they grow up to that particular one, a couple of metres tall, um, but they don't grow into a tree and um, they don't get woody. The second one is Desmanthus leptophilus, and it's a, uh, a leafy, sometimes very leafy um, plant and um, can be uh, low growing and some of them grow into a, have a sh or have a shrubby habit. habit. Uh, the third one is Desmanthus vergatus and vergatus is a uh, prostrate to erect, multi-stemmed and it's a, a fairly herbaceous uh, type of plant. I'm just going to spend a minute now to talk to you about the new variety that has been released called Progardes and um, so Progardes Pro is a blend of selected varieties of um, Desmanthus and they've resulted from many years of surveying old abandoned legume trials across semi-arid regions of north and western Queensland and the, the best survivors um, that have withstood and persisted um, over time were selected. So they've come through uh, droughts, grazing, flood, frost, fire and um, various insects attacks. The image on the bottom left there is uh, from around Blackwall. That plot is uh, now 25 years old and so the best um, survivors from that have been selected. And the one on the right is from an pl old plot around uh, Isisford uh, on a pebbly gidgy soil. So those, the seeds and plants for there were uh, collected and taken back to JCU. And uh, when I got a bit of seed, they were then sent up to Kendrick's group at uh, Walkerman and uh, seed increased. And that seed was then put back into other trials, for example, around Charters Towers and Hewenden. Um, the commercial potential of these um, select selections was um, appreciated by um, Agrimix, um, who have um, become JCU's commercialisation partner to further develop uh, market and um, PBR these selections, um, which are now called ProGardes, so Pro for Protein, Gar for Gardener and Des for Desmaphis. Um, and the few images there, um, you can see um, the, the one on the top left there is one of the seed crops up on the Afton Tablelands. Uh, on the right is um, uh, quite a lot of seed, um, around 10, 12,000 hectares has been planted in, over the last couple of years. Um, and on the bottom, some of it's also gone into buffalo renovation and with a result uh, similar to, to the image on the bottom right. So in conclusion, um, I hope the diversity that I've illustrated in the Desmanthus genus um, illustrates the great potential for pasture development in Northern Australia and with um, support and resources from industry, interest from graziers, seed producers and enthusiasm from researchers, there, there, there are many opportunities and potential yet to be realised. Um, there is still much to be done, however, regarding the agronomy, selection and development, grazing management of the legumes um, to increase the productivity and sustainability of our grazing industry through these um, pasture sciences. Thank you.